You guys know the rules. Top 10 lists for the week are top 10 horses from this week. I gave you a, an update of all the two-year-olds, all the three-year-olds. I gave you a list of two-year-olds that may be of concern, and people have asked me questions about them. I missed one horse, Sweet on Pete. How did I miss Sweet on Pete? Uh, a number of our clients asked about Sweet on Pete, and I simply said, hey, Sweet on Pete is fine. This is a big, giant filly. Wait until the corks come off, you know, and let her grow into her body. I know it's hard to watch a horse that looks like she's struggling, but what you see is struggling, I may see is, is tiny little baby steps forward. So tiny amounts of progression. It's hard to make an argument for progression when the horse makes breaks, but she was another one of those horses that still had the corks on, still had long toes, maybe needed to go see the blacksmith, get a little manicure before she trained yesterday. It was just a very rare window where the last, apparently the last cold day for, for at least 14 days on our app, uh, on, my, on my weather app was Saturday. The blacksmith could either shoe them on Tuesday and take the corks off them and hope that they didn't need cork on Saturday or play it safe, train them, hope they train good and then shoe them accordingly afterwards. I opted for the latter and it really did cost a couple of horses a decent training mile yesterday. They still got their work in but a horse like Sweet on Pete I thought was, was training rather well leading up to yesterday and then made a couple of breaks yesterday. We'll get her shod. Uh, now. I guess we're going to take a, we're, we're going to, the Sweet Up Pete was the last horse on that list uh, of horses that I'd given you that people were asking questions about. That will now lead into the top 10 list of yesterday. Top 10 list for yesterday is simple, right? This was the first day that there was 10 clear winners, right? 10, I don't mean horses that won the sets, just one through 10 was pretty clear to me. You know, um, horses made breaks. I just couldn't put them on. Will the win, however, I just got done telling you I think she is the best horse we have, or could be the best horse we have in 2021. What I see, uh, and, the, and the way that she's got better and better and better over the last month and a half or so, and I don't care, I know you guys do, but I don't care about the breaks she made yesterday. It means little to me. I know everybody's like, well, it matters. It means zero, nothing, it means nothing. Why did they make a break? How do you fix it? If you have a horse that's, look at Baumhugger. She spent the entire month of January making breaks. I'll give you a little, uh, 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 she is on this list. How's that? And I'll, I'll go even further, right? I'll, I'll ruin the whole list right up front. Bomb Hugger is by far, by far, the best horse on the property right now, bar none. This is a horse that never made the top 10 list. Never made the top 10 list in January. Philly, we had high hopes for. Geez, chapter seven, I hope she comes around. Geez, I, I hope her breeding shows up. These things are things that we talk about all the time with other horses that we talked about with Bomb Hugger all the time. And I was right. Breeding did show up. Just had to get the equipment proper. Get the equipment proper. And then, uh, there goes Jim. Get the equipment proper and, um, you know, let her find some consistency. Find her confidence and use that speed that we know, we knew that she had. And, um, you know, when it came, when it comes to horses like Wildewind Hanover, as I said, she'll also find that stage. We will find that 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 thing that just uh, locks her all up to the point where she's now focused on what she can do. She doesn't have to worry about the turns. She doesn't have to worry about making breaks. She doesn't have to worry about putting steps in. She's dialed in and ready to go. That's what we're aiming for with all the horses. We will get there. And as I said, in case you think that I'm full of shit some reason, uh, look at what took place with Bomb Hugger in the early stages of her training, December into January into the first Friday of February. Like, oh my God, what is wrong with this filly? She can't trot any... And now there isn't a horse on the property wants any piece of her right now. That was a filly yesterday that had been off three weeks. We trained everybody on Wednesday. We didn't train Bomb Hugger on Wednesday. Didn't even train her. She's just jogged for three weeks. Turned her loose first over and beat one of the best horses on the property. Hands down, fair and square yesterday and made him like it. So let's get to the top 10 list now that I ruined the top of it. Let's get to the rest of it. Number 10. I don't think you can argue with any horse, unless I missed a set, which I don't think I missed. I don't think you can argue with any of my top 10 picks from yesterday on this list. You might say, ah, oh, this horse needs to be lower, higher, whatever. But these 10 horses to me stuck out as a 10 that deserve to be talked to about today. As I said, Will the Win Hanover can't make this list off making two breaks yesterday. She, she can't be on the top 10 list for yesterday. These 10 do. Number 10, Kathy with an eye, won her set, looked good. Was Harlan all going to beat her? Maybe. Maybe not but he made a break. He'll never know. Kathy with an eye is a horse that was way behind everybody else. Ended up coming here late. 
breaking late. Then, you know, big, powerful filly. Looked a little floppy and out of sorts on the track for quite a while. Started to put it all together. Urinated on a bunch of people. And now... <laughs> And now has put it all together, the part where she understands her work. Very happy with Kathy with an I yesterday. Uh, top marks for her, good for her. Number 10, Kathy with an I. Number 9, Garden, Garden State Deal. You're going to see this filly climb the ladder. This filly, I told you guys, another, another one of these examples. I kept telling you, don't worry about the brakes, don't worry about the brakes. Eventually, we'll get the hobbles on her if we have to, and you're going to see a different horse. You see that horse now. She looks confident. She looks strong. Very impressed with Garden State Dio. Uh, and very impressed with her yesterday. A horse that I touted, and that's number nine, by the way, is Garden State Dio. Kathy with an I, Garden State Dio. Number eight is a horse I touted last week. I went with her Wednesday, and I was so impressed, I actually backtracked. I, I walked back my claim that I would go with her yesterday because I just didn't feel I had to, right? I was so impressed with her on Wednesday, I didn't need to go with her on Saturday. And her name is Mischievous Rose. She was very, very good on Saturday. Um, you know, Johnny's done a great job with this filly. She just looks good all the time. Um, you know, I don't want to get into her breeding. I, I took the time last weekend to reach out to a few clients about buying shares up of this filly, and they were all gone right away. And I'm hope I hope that that pans out. You guys helped me, and for the price you got her for, it appears that I helped you. So hopefully that pans out, and she turns into a good horse this season. Uh, in the summer and we all look back on it as a positive experience that is number eight mischievous rose number seven could have been much higher luck of the dragon another johnny horse got the job done yesterday and looked good i thought that maybe he almost their boss got up and beat him but nay nay he did not he came close but close only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades as i was told as a kid uh so our, uh uh, luck of the dragon first over and beat some good horses now in fairness I was going with Century Invictus and I didn't want to cross the lines and strike him down the lane Is he felt like he was in neutral a little bit was he in neutral because he was tired was he in neutral because I used him hard was he in neutral because he had two and a half weeks of just jogging I didn't know after the wire I hit him a couple of swats and zoom he took off again now that's not to say I would have beat them I think I would have but to take nothing away from luck of the dragon luck of the dragon uh, easily the horse we paid him in. We're paying him. You guys are racing him. We're all racing him in the Next Generation Series in June. We paid the $10,000 uh, sustaining fee for Luck of the Dragon. Very happy with what I saw from him yesterday. That is number seven, Luck of the Dragon. Number six, Arches Rainbow. Keep your eye on this filly. If she continues to look good, put weight on, stay confident and strong, man, she could be any kind of horse. This filly has got a big, big engine very, very impressed with Arches Rainbow. It's an Archangel filly, obviously, first foal out of a Muscle Hill mare. And she looks really, really, really good. Very impressed with her. Resolute Bay. Jeez, Johnny made a bunch of the horses on the list. So that was number six, was Arches Rainbow. Very impressed with this filly. She's been very good for a while. If you if you walk back and, and uh, if you take a little trip back and look at the videos of the top ten lists and talk to, listen to Johnny McKinnon talking... He said that Arches Rainbow can outtrot anybody on the on the on the training center, uh, you know, for a short piece. That's a strong statement. I don't know if it's true, but I was very impressed to hear him say that. And she's been a very good filly. I expect she'll only get better and better and better as the spring wears on. Number one, two, three, four, five. Number five, Resolute Bay. Made a little break yesterday, but still strong, finishing up the mile. Now, this is important because where he used to make his breaks were down by the wire. Remember that? A couple of times he ran in the middle of straightaway down the stretch. It was very frustrating. We've been working and working with him. Johnny wanted to put a hood on him. I think he's much better with just an ear hood on. He was so much better yesterday. Yeah, he knuckled over a couple of times and get out of gear. But when he really had it when we really had to bear down on him, really push him and push him, um, you know, he really showed up and looked great yesterday. Resolute Bay, easily number five. Number four Amy's favorite filly, not. Of Tom is number four. Uh, of Tom, no, we joked, I joke about Amy, with Amy about this filly, because I love her to death. I think she's just a beautiful filly, but she can be a little rambunctious, and she can be a little rude sometimes. She almost ran away with Amy on Wednesday, and she was not a happy camper. And she expressly prohibited her going with Of Tom anymore. She said, no more, I'm never going with Of Tom again, which I thought was a little unfair. I think Of Tom was just playing with her. 
but um, she was fantastic on Saturday. First half 17, last half 14. I love this filly. She just puts it all together all the time. She's got a beautiful, beautiful gait. Just really excited, you know, for the summer coming. It's not just that I want to get racing in the summer. There's some horses I just can't wait to see how they progress into the summer. This is definitely one of them for me. My personal, one of my personal horses I'm keeping a real close eye on is of Tom. A horse everybody is going to be looking at for the next little while is a colt named Rose Above It. Jimmy went with him yesterday. Uh, he made front. A couple other horses made breaks and whatnot. I said to Jimmy, how was he? He said, I, I never even asked him. He said he just did it all on his own. He said, I, I don't even think he broke a sweat. You know, Rose Above It has got a big, big engine for a little horse. And if we can keep his stress down and his confidence up and his, he keeps eating well, putting on weight, staying sound, I think he could be any kind of horse now. He is going to the deepest end of deep pools in the summer. That is Pennsylvania. But... Rose Above It is a nice colt with a lot to offer, and I can't wait to see how this guy continues to train. Top two, you've already got one figured out. I'm going to give you the other one, and that was the horse that got beat by Bomb Hugger. That is number two, Voyage of Ice and Fire. Um, he is our top colt, Ohio bred colt right now. I think he'll probably remain there. Uh, we did pay him into the. We did pay him into the next generation series. I thought he was very, very good yesterday. Bombhugger beat me fair and square, but I put a big move on him. He's another horse that had two weeks off. He's got a big frame. So here, here's the difference. Bombhugger is a, a beautiful, medium-sized filly that is exactly, she'll look like this in July. Might be shinier, might have more muscle, a little more weight on her, but this is how she's going to look in July. Voyage of Ice and Fire looks like he ate a smaller, younger version of himself over the last month. He's huge. He's tall. He's big. He wears lots of weight up front. He had long toes because he was in that same cork category. And he wears tight hobbles. So the weight and the hobbles should work against each other. And I hope we can start shedding some of that weight and maybe letting the hobbles out. That would be nice. But for right now, he's got a lot of things going against him. But he's just so mentally strong and a big, powerful colt that he can overcome almost any hurdle we put in front of him. Now, the hurdle that was coming to him yesterday, he just simply didn't have enough gas in the tank to beat her. He wanted to. After the wire, he kept digging and digging and digging, and James just kind of protected Bomb Hugger. He didn't want her to run in the turn by the road, and as he just kind of throttled her back a hair, Voyage of Ice and Fire hit another gear and took off again. I just love this horse because I like horse. I, I say this all the time. I said it to Steve this morning. I say it to everybody that'll listen all the time. You give me a horse with a great work ethic, right? A well, a well built body, an athletic body, and that horse could be, could be anything. And Voyage of Ice and Fire has got a fantastic pedigree. You guys miss his pedigree. Take the time to go back and look. Punch up Voyage of Ice and Fire. Go on the site and look at his actual pedigree. All the money and wins that are in that pedigree. Then you look at how powerful this and strong this horse is. I got high hopes. I got, I, you know, I like Up Tom, and I want to see how she turns out. Voyage of Ice and Fire. I got high, high hopes for. For the summer of 2021 in Ohio. I love everything about this horse. But what I like about him is he loves his work. You can't beat a horse that loves to work harder than the other horses around them. So although my number one pick bomb hugger of the day beat him fair and square. May come a time when those tables are turned. And if there isn't, that's fine. They'll never race against each other. So uh, number two voyage of ice and fire now. Number one bomb hugger. We've talked about bomb hugger for a while. I think it's mostly important we understand how quickly these horses can change, right? How quickly you can go from, what is wrong with this filly, to, oh my God, this thing's a freak. It happened like that, right? You look at all the horses that show the ability. Sure, they have to have the work ethic. They have to have the right attitude. But the ones that show the ability... And then you, you get the right gear on them, the right shoes on them. Their confidence starts to build. And then all of a sudden, you, you see the transformation, right? You, you see a horse like Bomb Hugger just emerge from this cocoon where she went from, what the hell is wrong with this filly to, oh my dear God, this thing can fly. I, I really, I had told Shelby, who takes care of Bomb Hugger, on Wednesday, I said, don't think the Bomb Hugger is going to look great on Saturday because she's not. You can't not train for three weeks and then go out and beat these horses. You know, now granted most of them were also on a very soft schedule, but this particular filly, I thought she'd be okay Saturday. James just sat there on her and she just 
inched in, took over the lead, and there was nothing I could do about it with Voyage of Ice and Fire. He was trotting all he could. Now, he ended up passing her again in the turn, which probably helped him, but at the same time, um, she just made him like it. <laughs> There's nothing I could do about it. There's nothing he could do about it. She's just a ferocious little animal. She's like a little pit bull, and um, she's got it going. She's got a lot going on for this filly. She's got good breeding. She's got a great attitude, and she has got a turn of foot and a burst of speed on any size track. I, I say that because she accelerates so quick in the turn in the straightaways, but then can hold it together in the turns. Now her hobbles are on a little snug. I don't care. Don't care. This filly has put it all together, and if the horse that we see right here in March can progress and put it all together in the summer, that's a good horse. So bomb hugger number one. I suspect she's going to hang out around number one for quite a while, um, especially after what I saw yesterday. I really, as much as I love, love this filly and I have a ton of respect for her, I didn't think she could do what she did yesterday. Just a slow first over grind and then how do you like it? She just give it to me down the lane with a horse that I think is one of our best horses overall. Voyage of Ice and Fire is a legit fast horse, especially for March. And for her to come first over and just kind of thumb her nose at him down the lane it's it was pretty incredible it's a big mile for her big mile for uh for the trotters but uh an impressive mile most important for the people that own bomb bomb hugger that got giant smiles on their faces good for you uh unfortunately i'm not part of that group so for those of you out there also who think that anything just keeps shares in the best horses he can I don't own any of Bomb Hugger, and I don't see anybody out uh, besting her, knocking her off the top of the hill for quite a while. This filly can absolutely fly. So, that is your top 10 list. I'll run through it quick again. And these were 10 horses that belonged on here. If you want to say somebody else did, maybe I missed a set or something. I don't think I did. Number 10, Kathy with an I. Number 9, Garden State Dio. Number 8, Mischievous Rose. Number 7, Luck of the Dragon. Number six, Arches Rainbow. Number five, Resolute Bay. Number four, Of Tom. Number three, Rose Above It. Number two, Voyage of Ice and Fire. And rightly so, number one, Bomb Hugger. So that's your top ten list for Saturday. First week in March, I believe, wasn't it? Yes. Not sure it was. First week in March. Uh, very, very impressed with... Uh, with our group so far. As you can see, I gave you guys a very in-depth look at horses I'm focusing on. Horses that, for whatever reason, just haven't done it completely right yet. But, I need you to look at the top of number one. At the number one, top of the list this week. The horse has been top of the list probably for the last month. The horse will remain there for a while. This was a horse that really wasn't functioning that well in December, into January, almost into February, and then just exploded into this monster. And that's how quick it can happen. So, uh, a lot of talent here, a lot of horses that are coming forward, a lot of horses that look good. I will be back. We still got a ton to talk about. I'll be back in just a minute.